Welcome! Today I'll show you how to containerize or dockerize an ASP.NET Core T0 Web API. You'll learn how to create an ASP.NET Core T0 Web API project, how to add Docker artifacts with Visual Studio Code, and how to build and run the ASP.NET Core project as a Docker container. Before getting started, let's go through a few things that you'll need in your box to follow the steps in this video. The first one is a .NET Core CLI, which you can get at .NET, and this will allow you to both build and run .NET Core apps in your box. Next, we're going to use uh, Visual Studio Code, which you can get at code.visualstudio.com, and this we'll be using to explore the contents of the project that we're going to create, as well as to edit uh, the, the Docker files used to uh, create the container images. Next, uh, you're going to need uh, the Docker engine, which you can get at docs.docker.com, and um, this you're going to need in order to be able to enable uh, the creation of Docker images and the execution of Docker images in your box. If you just scroll down to the support platform section, you should be able to find uh, a version for your OS. And finally, uh, the Postman uh, tool is a very handy tool to be able to uh, uh, query uh, web APIs with a very nice uh, interaction. Uh, this is an uh, optional requirement, as you may as well just use the browser for this, but it's really nice uh, to use Postman for this, and it's completely free. Also notice that all these tools are available in uh, multiple uh, operating systems, so you, you're free to pick whichever version works for you. Uh, for this video, we'll be using the Windows version of the tools. So now let's close this. So now let's go to a command prompt. And here, uh, let's use the .NET Core CLI to create a brand new ASP.NET Core 3.0 Web API project, uh, which we were going to call Hello ASP.NET Core. So let's do .NET new Web API dash O Hello ASP.NET Core. And just for the sake of making these things a bit simpler for this video, we will not be enabling HTTPS, uh, but of course, um, you should always enable HTTPS in your production projects. So let's do no HTTPS. So this is going to generate a bunch of files in a new hello ASP.NET Core directory and create a project for us. So uh, let's switch to that directory. And then uh, let's open uh, Visual Studio Code to see what got generated. So we'll do code dot. And here we are in Visual Studio Code. Let's close this from here. And the main thing that's of our interest is the controller that gets included in this uh, new template, which is called Weather Forecast Controller. So in this one, and before we move forward, let me actually uh, uh, talk about this little prompt here. Uh, this uh, prompts us to add a few files that Visual Studio Code needs to be able to both build and run uh, uh, the project uh, from Visual Studio Code. It's a generally good idea to say yes here. So that's going to create a new .bs code folder with a bunch of files in there. Now, back to the controller. Weather Forecast Controller is a very simple uh, controller that gets automatically added as you create this new project. It has just one, way, uh, one API, uh, get uh, API, and what it does is just returns uh, a bunch of uh, weather, court, weather forecast um, uh, projections or, uh, that uh, based on uh, some date, some temperature, and some summary that's also based on this random list of uh, weather summaries. Okay, so this is the API that we will be working with across this video. So now let's actually run this uh, before containerizing and see what we get. So let's go to the debug uh, hub and let's do uh, start debugging. This is going to do .NET build to build our project. And then uh, it's going to uh, spin up a browser for us. Uh, so the project is, is running in localhost in port 5000. The actual uh, API is in the weather forecast uh, route, matching the controller that got created. So we'll go there, and as you can see, uh, we are the, we're getting uh, results out of this call to the weather forecast API. Now, like I said, uh, you can totally use the browser for this, but uh, usually Postman is a much better tool for exploring what comes back from this API. So that's what I'll be opening Postman here. And I'm just going to uh, create a new request, get request to that URL, and then I'll click send. And as you can see here, now we have those uh, five uh, random weather forecasts uh, generated for us in a very nicely formatted uh, way. Okay, so now let's uh, minimize this and let's close this 
and let's stop the debugger. Now it's time to actually containerize uh, the application. So I'll also close this. So in order to do that, one thing that I recommend is to uh, add the Docker extension for Visual Studio Code, and that you can do from the Extensions Hub. If you don't have it already installed, just look for Docker. It should be the first uh, the first thing on that, that pops up there, and just install it. It will take a few seconds. Uh, what this will allow us is to, among other things, it allows us to automatically generate a Docker file for the platform that we're working with here. In this case, ASP.NET Core. So I'll close this and go back to this folder. And now let's go to view, command let, and let's type docker, add docker files to workspace. So now this is going to ask, you, ask us uh, for the application platform that we're working with. In this case, it is uh, ASP.NET Core, uh, which operating system we are targeting with this container. In this case, it's going to be Linux. And which is the port that will be uh, our app is going to be listening on. And let's just leave it as port 80. And as you can see, an initial Docker file got generated for us uh, right away. Now let's let's explore this file and see what 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 all this stuff means. So each line here really means uh, or, or creates a, a layer uh, within our uh, our application that uh, builds on top of the previous layer. So the first line here says that we're going to be creating an ASP.NET uh, Core uh, 3.0. Uh, uh, app, and that we're tagging this uh, layer or this stage uh, as base. Okay, and so we're going to be using the mcrmicrosoft.com slash .net slash core slash ASP.NET repository. And then uh, we will be switching to a new deer called uh, a slash app uh, as our work deer, and we will be exposing a uh, port 80 as we already said. Now, interestingly, this template uses this concept of multi-stage builds, which is a very nice way to optimize the size of the of the Docker image. So what it says is that after doing that, uh, do not uh, keep using that uh, that stage there. Uh, let's switch to another stage, which is pretty much kind of a, a, another image. Uh, kind of another image and that we'll, we will be aliasing as built and this one here is going to be based actually in the .NET Core SDK uh, base image, 3.0 SDK base image, which is definitely bigger. It includes all sorts of uh, tools and compilers and, and stuff that you need to build the app, but that you will not need when it's time to actually run the app. So we will be running uh, all this section out of uh, that uh, that image, and then we'll be later on we'll be coming back to the initial base image that we use in, over there. Uh, where we just copy the files that got generated. So the idea is, like I said, uh, to optimize that so that the final image only includes the files needed to run the app, but not all the other files needed to compile the app. So we say, go from that base image, and let's Alice is at build. Work there is going to be src. Let's copy the uh, the project file into the, the, the root of this directory, src. Let's restore all dependencies over there. Uh, Nuget restore uh, all dependencies of the project. Copy all the other files into that same location. We will remove this line here, it's not quite needed. And then lastly, let's do .NET build um, to build the project. But in this case, since we're publishing a Docker image, it makes more sense to do it a release version as opposed to the default uh, debug version of the app. And let's output all that into an app directory. Then we go ahead and we go from that uh, from that stage and we come up with a, yet another stage called the publish stage where we're going to say just .NET publish uh, that same project in the same configuration and the same output directory. So that ends uh, up and um, finishes the actual compilation and creation of the binaries that are going to be included in this in this Docker image. And as a final step, we go back, like I said, to the base image and we, we switch to a uh, slash app directory, and most importantly, we copy uh, the files that live in this Polish directory created in the previous uh, stage and into the slash app directory that was declared as a work there a moment ago. So all the files are in there, we'll just copy here. Everything else, all the all these other layers that were created here that involve a bunch of extra files are completely discarded, not included in the final image, so keeping the image uh, very small in size. And finally, we'll say that the entry point is going to be .NET, uh, pointing to the hello ASP.NET Core that, uh, that DLL that we have here, which is the same that we'll get if we just explore quickly the bin directory uh, over here uh, for, uh, for the DLL that's produced by our project. Okay. So now that we have that, let's open a terminal. Let's open a brand new terminal here in VS Code. And let's actually build the image uh, out of this Docker file. 
One more thing that I mentioned that I didn't mention, by the way, is that that uh, Docker ignore file, which is similar to uh, if, if you know Git, it's similar to a Git ignore file. It just mentions a bunch of uh, potential directories and files that you may have uh, uh, in your project structure that you want to exclude uh, from the the image that's going to be created. So, for instance, anything that has to do with being an OBJ, uh, you may not want to uh, include them into the final image. You just want to include the stuff that got that is meant to be distributed within the container. Okay, so now let's actually build this image and we do that uh, using the docker build command. And we need to assign a, a tag to this image that's going to be built. So the tag will be composed of, of a name and an actual tag. So the tag is going to be, uh, the name of the image is going to be hello ASP.NET core. And let's say uh, we'll call it uh, B1. So this is, like I said, this is just a tag, so it's a way to remember, uh, what, uh, a way to address uh, this version of the image. So usually you will be uh, putting here some sort of build number, build version, something that, that uniquely identifies uh, this version of the image that you're producing. And finally, I'll say dot to include, uh, to, to mention that this pro this current location is the is the context of the docker build command that's going to be executed. So I'll go ahead and say enter. What this is going to do is go uh, to ncrmicros.com and download the ASP.NET Core image uh, first, uh, the ASP.NET Core runtime image, and tag it as, uh, as, as base. Then it gets also the SDK image, and both of them are going back into my, into my box. And of course, first time this, this may take a, a little bit because it actually needs to download all these uh, layers into your box. But after immediately after the second time you do this, this is going to be blazing fast because the images are already there and only the new images will be created. So as you see, after doing that, it will go ahead and follow one by one each of the lines that we declared. Uh, including the restoration and the build and building of this uh, of the project and finally copying the files into the final location and this is all done okay and then um, uh, when that is done let's verify that the image got actually created so let's do docker images and as you can see the image that we created is right here hello spinet core tag v1 and also, uh, you can notice that we have these other two images downloaded into your into our box for next uh, for uh, next versions that we may want to create. Now that we have the image there, the, we may want to also run it. So let's run it to verify that it's actually working as as expected. To do that, we can use the Docker run uh, dash it dash dash rm command. Uh, so this is kind of an interactive session, and that the Docker container should be removed after we finish uh, running the process that running inside the image. We should also map uh, some port into the internal port of the container. So for instance, we will say that when we browse to the 8080 port, uh, that should be routed into the into port 80 within the container. Okay, so this is the way to kind of open a little window into the, the app that's running inside our container. And then we need to mention which, which image we actually want to run here. So that would be the hello, ASP.NET Core B1 uh, image. So let's hit enter. And as you can see, the app is now running, just as if we were running it directly from, from our box. And it's just that now it is not running, uh, going back to Boltzmann, it is not running in port uh, 5000, it's actually running in port 8080, mapping inside into port 80. So if you just hit this, you can see we just got a response back. Uh, it's exactly the same thing as if it was running in the box, but now it is running within the container. And finally, uh, to stop the container, we can just do Control C, and that's going to stop the container and actually discard it. Uh, keeps the image, but discards the container because of the options that we specify. So there you go. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this video was uh, very useful, and I'll see you next time.